Hello friends, I am Arpit and I am here with today's analysis. Today is 16th of December and we are going to deal with three very important topics which are in news. The first topic is the Maldives which is, is a small island country, a group of islands in the Indian Ocean region. This country ends this water survey pact with India. The water survey pact was done for hi conducting hydrological surveys by the Maldivian government in 2019 with government of India. Now in 2019, we had, you know, Ibrahim Mohammed Soli as the president of Maldives, which was, you know, the party to which that person belonged was considered to be an India friendly party or a pro India party. But with the recent elections in Maldives held recently, you know, the new party which has come to power is believed to be anti India and is giving a difficult situation or a difficult time to India. And hence, you know, there is this situation where India, government of India has been asked to pack its bags and go back to India. No hydrological surveys will be conducted by India. Actually, the political party which is the now in power, Mohammed Muizu is name of the president, is there in power because during his campaign time, the president used this India out campaign heavily. This India out campaign is not a new campaign, it is an old campaign in Maldives because Maldivians believe that a lot of intrusions has been done by India and Indians in Maldives which is, you know, harming their territorial integrity and sovereignty. And on this pretext, this person won the elections over there and now that person is taking all the necessary steps including this one. Indian troops were also stationed there in Maldives. They have been you know, withdrawn from Maldives very recently. So all these steps have been there. The big question is who is going to replace India in Maldives to do the hydrological surveys? The answer is no one. Maldives itself is going to do those hydrological surveys and whatever sensitive data or you know, strategic data that will you know be coming out of these surveys, it will be kept with Maldives only. So this is the situation. The second piece of news which we are going to discuss is what the world says about abrogation of Article 370. Now abrogation of Article 370 happened in 2019. From then on, we will see what the world leaders have said. We have important stakeholders like Pakistan and the Arab world or the Muslim world. Now in the Muslim world, Pakistan, it is but natural, will be, you know, objecting to abrogation of Article 370. But apart from Pakistan, Turkey and Malaysia were the only two countries which opposed India's abrogation of Article 370. No other country, notably the you know countries like Saudi Arabia or UAE which are considered to be the leaders of the Islamic world, they did not criticize India's move. They instead said that it is a bilateral I would say issue and abrogation of Article 370 is purely a domestic issue of India which India should take care of. Another stakeholder or another party involved in criticizing India was China at that time. Actually, the Pakistani foreign minister visited China just after the abrogation of Article 370. And after the visit of Pakistan's foreign minister, Mr. S. J. Shankar, that is India's foreign minister, visited China. And, you know, Pakistan's foreign minister advocated in China that China should pick up this issue in the United Nations Security Council. United Nations Security Council, this issue was put forward by China, but it was opposed by countries like France and USA. Poland at that time was the president of UNSC that also addressed or acknowledged that this is an internal matter or a bilateral issue and has to be resolved bilaterally between India and Pakistan. Apart from it, China was more concerned about the naming of Ladakh as a union territory by India because China claims Ladakh as it's five as part of its five finger policy. One of the fingers is Ladakh. So China was claiming that how India unilaterally can, you know, 
transform the status of Ladakh from a state or part of Jammu and Kashmir to a UT. That was the major bone of contention between India and China. The developed world took a nuanced view on this issue. They largely said that it was a bilateral issue and has to be resolved bilaterally. Countries like USA or the European Union, they said it in this way. But all in all, if I say that it was a diplomatic victory for India, as no fierce criticism from across the world came for India when India abrogated Article 370. And this is something worth commendable. And the third topic which we are going to discuss today is the India-Oman relations. Why we are going to discuss? Because the King of Oman is coming on a state visit to India today, that is 16th of December. And on the agenda is strategic relations as well as economic relations. Now we established strategic relations with Oman way back in 2008. Oman is actually located at a very strategic location in the Indian Ocean region. So we needed you know, a partner in the Indian region which will be there with India to ensure the security of that region. Because this region was suffering from maritime piracy a lot. Now, apart from it, you know, Oman is largely considered to be a neutral and balanced country in the fragile and disturbed West Asia. Oman, with its diplomatic efforts over the years, have created a strategic balance between the Gulf countries, means the, the GCC countries, which are, I would say, uh, the Sunni countries, Iran on one side, the Shia country. And it has also created a balance between the GCC countries and Israel. Similar kind of thing India has also done in West Asia. The difference is that India is not part of West Asia whereas Oman is. So Oman is generally known for its neutral stance, for its bold, I would say, diplomacy which believes in moderation and you know, mediation. Wherever any, any conflict is there, Oman mediates. Like I still remember, Oman mediated during the 2019 Gulf or the Persian Gulf crisis, which happened between Iran and USA. It also played a crucial role in 2015 Iran nuclear deal time. So all these things make India and Oman come on the same page. India and Oman are increasing their bilateral trade year by year. India is the second largest or the second biggest destination of Omani oil. Trade between India and Oman is somewhere around 12 to 12.5 billion dollars which is in, in favor of Oman means Omani exports are more to India as compared to Indian exports to Oman. But yes, we are increasing possibilities in sectors like space or rare earth minerals which are going to be on the agenda, which are going to be discussed during this year's visit of the Omani Sultan. So let's hope for better and strengthened relations between India and Oman. This better and strengthened relations not only will benefit both the countries economically, but you know strategically also. So let's get started with the first topic. Maldives ends water survey pact with India. Now, barely months after asking India to withdraw its military personnel, India had stationed its military personnel also in Maldives because the previous government in Maldives was pro-India. Our geostrategic footprint in Maldives had been increasing since the last five years, but now India has got a shocker because an anti-India government is there in power in Maldives. Now. President Mohammed Moizu is heading that government and you know they came to power on this pretext or this India out campaign, India out poll campaign which they used during the poll campaign. Now they have decided not to renew the previous government's agreement with India on a hydrographic survey of the island nation's waters. This Hydrographic survey was signed in 2019, June 8, 2019 for five years and is expiring in June 2024. And when it was signed, the terms and conditions were it is going to be there for five years. And at the end of five years, you know, with prior six months notice, 
any of the parties means india or maldives if they wish to come out of this uh, agreement they can come out so now maldives six months prior has issued a notice to us that we want to be out of this particular agreement with india so it is like this this was signed when president ibrahim mohammed soli was there the then president and allowed the indian government to do this survey now who is going to replace india actually in the future this survey is going to be conducted under 100% maldivian management and with only maldivians privy to the information so we can say that maldivians is or maldives are trying to become atmanirbhar we have lost this deal with maldives bad news no one is coming or no one is replacing us relatively good news china they are not talking about right now is good news for us that china is not going to replace us if china would have been there then that would be a problem to us now why the maldivian government has taken such a step the maldivian administration believes it is best for our national security to improve the maldivian military's capacity to conduct such surveys and protect such sensitive information with maldives only so this kind of stance is taken by india also this philosophy of atmanirbharta we are also pursuing so we cannot you know put too many questions in front of maldives so this is the situation the second topic is how the world reacted on abrogation of article 370 article 370 abrogated in 2019 supreme court gave its verdict december 11 2023 now the supreme court seal on abrogation of article 370 is also there which affirms the abrogation of article 370 but in a globalized world we are living in we should not forget and we should i would not say that we should seek the validation of the world leaders but yes it definitely will impact us as a country economically socially politically strategically that how the world is seeing or looking at us in context of this decision and you know to be happy about this thing is that the world is taking it positively we were not as such criticized by many countries ha huh? criticisms by pakistan and china are but natural and they came also so let's see what they said pakistan refused to acknowledge the supremacy of indian constitution over jammu and kashmir china said it did not recognize the so called union territory of ladakh set up unilaterally and illegally by india so china's yeah, i would say contention is separate and the western section of the china india border has always been or has always belonged to china this is what china claims so this is what they want pakistan and the muslim world what how or how did pakistan react pakistan recalled its ambassador india also followed suit stopped bilateral trade with india train and bus services there was this samjhauta express which was running the bus service the delhi lahore bus service the delhi lahore bus service started in 1999 the samjhauta express train this started in 1976 both of them stopped okay now apart from pakistan in the islamic world uae said the decision was india's internal matter and saudi arabia called for a peaceful settlement of the j and k issue in accordance with relevant international resolutions this is what stand they took and these two countries saudi arabia and uae are very important because these are considered as leaders of the islamic world however two countries in the islamic world that is Turkey Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan and Malaysia's prime minister Mahathir Mohamad they you know criticized India's stand on abrogation of article 370 now the western powers how did or how did they respond now first of all these western countries like USA and EU they issued 
I would say cautionary or advisories to their citizens that don't visit Jammu and Kashmir because this has become fragile in August 2019 I'm talking about. But yes, largely United States was extremely careful and nuanced in its comments. It was closely following the developments and noted their broader implications including potential for increased instability in the region. This was something which no one was wanting, increased instability in the region. Now what happened was the Pakistani Prime Minister was quite vocal when we abrogated Article 370 in 2019. Pakistani Prime Minister at that time was Mr. Imran Khan. He said that India is going to pay the price for this, we are going to do this, we are going to do that. His comments were quite radical in nature. Now, after hearing his comments, the Indian Prime Minister talked to the American President Donald Trump. Ki, bhai, this is happening and this can lead to escalations in the region and we were not, we will we'll not be responsible for that. The Pakistani Prime Minister's comments are going to be responsible for that. Then the American President, president dialed upon the Pakistani Prime Minister and told him to lower his voice. His voice was ultimately lowered. So it was like this. The European Union too was, has taken a measured stance. It called on India and Pakistan to reopen dialogue and reiterated the grouping's backing for a bilateral solution on Kashmir. So nuance stand taken by the developed world. Our all weather friend Russia obviously took a stand which is in our favor. Russia underlined that the changes were carried out within the framework of the Indian Constitution of Republic of India. So, Article 370 in our Constitution, whatever amendments we do, whatever we abrogate it or we keep it, it is our prerogative. So, that is what Russian government said. Moscow also stressed the bilateral nature of J&K issue and mentioned the Shimla Agreement which happened in 1972 and the Lahore Declaration which happened in 1999, both of them talk about resolving the disputes or the differences between the countries bilaterally without any third party mediation. This is what is there in the text of both of these agreements and Russian government highlighted both of these agreements and said that if any conflict is there that should be resolved bilaterally without any third party mediation. Now China and in bracket you can see Pakistan is written because China and Pakistan they form a nexus against India. Although China's opposition to article 370 was within context of Ladakh, China was saying how can India unilaterally you know label Ladakh as a union territory under India. Labeling any territory as a union territory means the central government has jurisdiction over that territory directly. So that is what China's contention was and obviously China was not happy with this abrogation of article 370 and so was Pakistan. So the Pakistan foreign minister named as you know Shah Mahmood Qureshi who sought China's support for Islamabad's bid to take New Delhi's move to the UN Security Council you know he went there in China Pakistan's foreign minister and told China ki bhai pick up this matter in United Nations Security Council. Theke. Now we will see what happened in United Nations Security Council in the next slide. But yes, just after the Pakistan Foreign Minister's visit to China, Mr. S. J. Shankar also visited China. Now days later, External Affairs Minister Mr. S. J. Shankar travelled to China and met the Chinese State Councillor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi. Wang put the onus of ensuring peace and stability in the region on New Delhi. Now if the onus of securing or if the onus of maintaining peace and security in the region is on New Delhi means on India then it Chinese are clearly signifying that Jammu and Kashmir is part of India. You take care of this territory and that is what we wanted. So China indirectly was saying that India take care of this situation. It was like this. But yes, China was not happy about Ladakh. Okay, so now coming back to this, that the Pakistani foreign minister visiting China and asking China to pick this matter up in the UNSC. So China did also pick this up, mat, uh, up this matter in China, UNSC, and China tried to bring the issue to UNSC, 
but was thwarted by the US and France. Thwarted by US and France means this effort of China on India's abrogation of Article 370 was thwarted by US and France means they and, and Germany also. Poland which had UNSC presidency at that time made it clear that a solution should be found bilaterally and not multilaterally. So an informal meeting was there on August 16 and no statement was also issued. So here also India's diplomatic victory was there. Now India's diplomatic efforts in third week of August 2019, Prime Minister Narendra Modi told US President Donald Trump about Pakistani Prime Minister's rhetoric over ab uh, abrogation of Article 370, which can lead to disturbances in the region. Then Donald Trump dialed Imran Khan and you know, Imran Khan lowered his voice. This is one such incident. Second is when our Prime Minister visited Biarritz, France on August 25-26 for the G7 summit. The French President Emmanuel Macron also stressed that no outside interference was warranted in JNK. The matter should be addressed bilaterally. In UAE, before going to France, on his way to France actually, our Prime Minister stopped in UAE and received the backing of Crown Prince Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nayan and was honoured with UAE's highest civilian award during that time. That is August 2019 only. Now this clearly signifies that UAE was not, I would say, discontented with India. It was like this. Now in September, S.J. Shankar travelled to Europe and USA. He reiterated there that abrogation of Article 370 from the Indian Constitution was India's internal matter and advised the world to accept the reality. And I think the world accepted the reality. And here we are, abrogation upheld by the Supreme Court of India also. Okay. So it is like this, it is very important to understand and know what the world said about this. The next is India-Oman relations. Why this is a news? Because the Omani Sultan Hatam bin Tariq is visiting India, his state visit it to India starts today. Now, he became the Sultan of Oman in January 2020 following the passing of Sultan Kabus. And this is his first visit to India. The last visit or last meeting between India and Oman, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi had visited Oman in February 2018 in his first visit to Oman as Prime Minister. Key agreements on trade, defense and security were agreed upon. Now, on agenda now, economic relations and strategic relations with Oman. Now, if we see Oman, this is India, this is Oman. So, Oman's location in this in Arabian Sea or Arabian Sea since it is part of Indian Ocean region is very, very crucial for India. Actually, India wants to pursue two policies over here or one policy that is Sagar, security and growth for all in the region. This region is Indian Ocean region. Second of all, it is, it is uh, going to be or has pledged to be a net security provider in the region. This region is Indian Ocean region and for that Oman is very much beneficial. Now if India wants to go to this region that is the Persian Gulf, then Oman is important. Oman is this and this small territory also belongs to Oman. Okay. So this is the I would say importance of Oman or I would say the geographical importance of Oman for India. The political significance of Oman. Now we have had some historical relations with Oman like during the Cold War era which was there 1945 till 1990 largely when the world was divided in you know, uh, two blocks at that time India was non-aligned and India did not have two good relations with the West Asian countries or the Middle East we can say or the Arab world. Arab world was too much apprehensive about India's position of non-alignment during the Cold War era. Arab world we can say was too much under the influence of either Russia or I would say USA. So, one country in this Arab world, Oman, 
विच वॉज वेलकमिंग फॉर इंडिया देन ऑल्सो अदरवाइज द अरब वर्ल्ड वॉज नॉट टू मच वेलकमिंग फॉर इंडिया ओमान हैज ऑलवेज इंडोज द स्ट्रैटेजी ऑफ न्यूट्रैलिटी एंड हैज प्रमोटेड मॉडरेशन एंड मीडिएशन सी ओमान इट सेल्फ इज पार्ट ऑफ वेस्ट एशिया विच इज इन पॉलिटिकल टर्मोइल सिंस वेरी लॉन्ग देर हैव बीन कॉन्फ्लिक्ट लाइन्स एंड इन दोज कॉन्फ्लिक्ट लाइन्स ओमान हैज अचीव्ड दिस न्यूट्रैलिटी सिमिलरली इंडिया हैज ऑल्सो अचीव न्यूट्रैलिटी इन द वेस्ट एशियन रीजन बट द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ओमान एंड इंडिया इज दैट जोग्राफिकली इंडिया इज नॉट प्रेजेंट और नॉट पार्ट ऑफ वेस्ट एशिया इंडिया इज पार्ट ऑफ साउथ एशिया बट ओमान इज पार्ट ऑफ वेस्ट एशिया in this conflict ridden west asia a position which india has also endorsed now how has oman achieved this strategic balance or neutrality it has been successful in creating a balance between gcc countries gulf cooperation council countries like saudi arabia uae there are six countries in gcc oman is also part of it qatar and all and the west west means usa and all pragmatic approach with neighbor iran iran is a shia country Oman's key role in 2015 Iran nuclear deal is well acknowledged apart from 2015 the 2019 Persian Gulf crisis which happened between Iran and USA that time also Oman's role is well acknowledged in pacifying the conflict now during GCC Qatar diplomatic standoff Now, there was a diplomatic standoff with Qatar of the GCC countries. Oman refused to join Saudi Arabia and other countries in breaking diplomatic ties with Qatar. Before Abraham Accords, Abraham Accords were signed between Israel, UAE, and Bahrain. Oman had forged normalcy with Israel too. The Israeli Prime Minister visited or paid a surprise visit to Oman before the Abraham Accords were signed in 2020. Now, the strategic significance. of oman for india strategic partnership with oman was signed during manmohan singh's i would say uh, prime ministership in 2008 it was signed now it is based on twin pillars first is mutual trust and shared interest now strategic partnership is any partnership where multiple i would say uh, levels of integration are there means economically culturally and all will be there but most importantly you no know, military partnership is there or security partnership is there security partnership means we are having exercises between our security forces we are having uh, arms trade with each other we are having information say uh, or i would say intelligence sharing agreements with each other these kind of partnerships if it has if it is there then we call the partnership between two countries as strategic partnership strategic partnership again repeating that multiple levels of partnership will be there economic cultural political and all but most importantly any partnership will be called a strategic partnership only and only if military partnership or security cooperation is there a defense and security arra- 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 arrangements form a key aspect of india oman strategic partnership oman is the first country with which india's all three f- forces that is army air force and navy hold joint exercises since 2012 13 indian naval ship has remained on duty in the gulf of oman for anti piracy operations because this region is quite sensitive both the countries have cooperated in ensuring maritime security in the indian ocean region india wants to extend its dominance in the indian ocean region and for that sagar policies that security and growth for all in the region and for that or for for pursuing those kind of policies countries like oman are very much supportive Now, during the Persian Gulf crisis, which happened in 2019, there is a crisis between USA and Iran. The Indian Navy launched Operation Sankalp to ensure the safe passage of Indian flagged ships, which most often operated off the coast of Oman. So here, India and Oman were coming together. Now, so much good things between India and Oman, but another thing is economic significance, bilateral trade. 12.388 billion dollars as of FY23 but out of this 12.388 roughly 4.5 billion dollars is india's export to oman 
means India is exporting less and importing more from Oman simply means that trade is tilted in Oman's favor. There are over 6,000 Indian India Oman joint ventures in Oman with an estimated investment of over 7.5 billion dollars. Around 7 lakh Indians live there. India was the second biggest market for Oman's crude oil. In October 2022, India and Oman launched Rupee Debit Card in Oman. Rupee Debit Card, which is a testament to, you know, promoting India's digital public infrastructure in the world. 7 lakh Indian diaspora is living in Oman, indulged in largely blue collar jobs and which Oman needs right now. Now, in this visit, what are we looking forward to? I will be covering what have been done when, when the state visit gets over. But what are we looking forward to in this visit? India and Oman are looking forward to increase cooperation in the space sector. Actually, an MOU has already been signed in this aspect. The possibility of an agreement on joint exploration of rare earth metals. Rare earth metals are very much important for electronic manufacturing and China has, I would say, a monopoly in this domain which we are desperate to break. So we are forging ties with many, many countries in the world. Take advantage of the proposed India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. Now, this was announced during this year's G20 summit. Work on it has not actually started on ground. But yes, it has been conceptualized and we want to take Oman or bring Oman obviously in part of uh, make part of it because you know Oman is there the gateway to Middle East it is considered Oman and we have good relations with Oman we've already seen. Now there is one private consortium also in India that is SAGE South Asia Gas Enterprise. This South Asia gas enterprise had proposed a 1400 kilometer gas pipeline from Oman to India. And similar kind of gas pipeline has been proposed by India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor also. So there is convergence between SAGE and India Middle East Europe Economic Corridor. This definitely can be pursued now. This pipeline of 1400 kilometers and address security challenges first in West Asia and the Indian Ocean region collectively. This is what we are aiming to. Now let's see what the outcomes of the visit of Sultan Tariq happens. We will definitely be covering on that. But yes, it was enough to give you a background of this. There was this editorial in the Hindu today which talked about this so that you can understand the developments in the times to come in a better way. And with this, we have come to an end of today's session. We will now be meeting tomorrow with more such informative news pieces. Till then, you guys very well know what to do. Keep studying, keep reading, keep writing and most importantly, keep revising. Namaste. Jai.